Warning, we are not trained or licensed professionals. Do not take any advice that we give as official doctoral prescribed medical treatment. We only use the name as a means to appreciate cinema as a therapeutic device, not to be confused with drugs, antidepressants, or any other forms of enhancements that you might find in legal states. Please enjoy responsibly. Additional disclaimer. If the film says f we can say it too. So check the film rating, and that will be our episode rating. Welcome to Film Therapy. <laughs> I'm Madison. I am also here. You are a person. I am a person. I'm a human we being. We are your therapists for movies and stuff today. I think I'm the one in the chair this week. <laughs> well, I will be your therapist. I will coach you. I have a lot to say about this movie, actually. That's awesome. I'm very glad you have a lot to say because I don't have too much to say. That's okay. Yeah, I know um, sometimes it takes a certain mindset to watch a certain movie, and it's okay if you're not in the right one. No, I really wasn't, and I don't know why. It, it, just, it just kind of, like, fell over me as this movie was on. Yeah, interesting. I mean, it's a long movie, so a lot of things can happen in this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie, uh, re- recapping this in a minute might not be very easy to do. I think I, I, think I got it. I'm going to say, well, let's see. I'll just, I'll start by saying that North by Northwest is a film from 1959 directed by Alfred Hitchcock starring Cary Grant and Eva Marie Saint. It was nominated for best writing, best art direction and best editing at the Oscars. And it won several lesser awards for writing and like Cary Grant for acting and several other things uh, like best overall picture and stuff. New York advertising man Roger Thornhill finds himself thrust into the world of spies when he is mistaken for a man by the name of George Kaplan. Foreign spy Philip Van Damme and his henchman Leonard try to eliminate him, but when Thornhill tries to make sense of the case, he is framed for murder. Now on the run from the police, he manages to board a train bound for Chicago where he meets a beautiful blonde, Eve Kendall, who helps him to evade the authorities. His world is turned upside down Yet again, when he learns that Eve isn't the innocent bystander he thought she was. Not all is as it seems, however, leading to a dramatic rescue and escape at the top of Mount Rushmore, and of course, a happily ever after. That kind of gets the gist. Yeah, yeah. What interested me with this movie right off the bat was how I've never seen the MGM logo in black and white, and it was on a green background. I've never seen that with any other movie, and I thought that was really fascinating. I didn't notice. Uh, Also, the opening credits, I noticed uh, some little things. One of the actors, his name was Ken Lynch. Nothing to do with David Lynch, but I thought (laughs) maybe. Bernard Herrmann did the music. He also did the music for Psycho, Vertigo, and The Man Who Knew Too Much. And the DP, Robert Burks, did a lot of Hitchcock films. I thought both of those aspects were great. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The music when they were on Mount Rushmore reminded me a little bit of Psycho. Mm. Um, I I know this came first, so 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 it's almost like that little motif part is like the uh, the precursor to the Psycho theme. Yeah, kind of like um, all the composers do that really with all their move uh, like film composers. I think they kind of bring stuff from their old films into their new films and stuff like that. So that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Also, this movie was in Vista Vision. What does that mean? I have no idea. I just thought it was. I just thought it sounded nice. Vista Vision. It looked good. Yeah, it did. I was surprised it was from 1959. They must have used the same kind of film for Rear Window because then both movies look have the exact same look to them. Oh. Psycho looks different because it's in black and white, obviously. Yeah. The way the film stock looks is the same for this and Rear Window, which is, I think they were both made in the 50s. Yeah. Also, I miss I miss movie like I like when movies have overtures like when it's, when there's like music and a black screen before it starts. It depends on the movie, but like it's, if it's especially if it's like 2001 or something. I really just love how that just like sets the tone for uh, a movie. Like movies don't do that anymore. I think like um, what comes to mind for me is the a killing of a sacred deer by Yorgos Lanthimos. I think Ooh, that really? has kind of an overture. It's like either, uh, it's either black, I think it's a black screen, but then it fades into an open heart surgery. So it's like very, very raw, disgusting, but it's wow. like, that's what it does. It's crazy. Yeah. No, I, ha- I have not seen that movie, but that's oh, very that fascinating. 
mm-hmm. just from the title and your description, I don't know if I could stomach it, but it sounds it sounds very intriguing. It is. But especially older movies like Ben Hur and Gone with the Wind and like Lawrence of Arabia, like those longer epics just all started with overtures and I just I just mm-hmm. think that's great. Also, the opening credits have gone out of fashion, but now it's um more so at the end. <laughs> obviously with bigger movies uh, yeah just just like having like five minute opening credits like i get it people are more impatient myself included i'm not gonna say i'm not but there's just something special about having the tone of the movie set in the beginning with the music and you have a few minutes to just like you know kind of whether in your home or in the theater just kind of sit get get sitting in your seat got your food or drink or whatever mm-hmm. you have mm-hmm. that time to just to get yourself like fully immersed i think when it starts you're immersed yeah i I agree. Yeah, I like that aspect of it because I always find myself like the moment I press play on something, I like have to get up and do something real quick. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> Me too. So it's like, oh wait, I gotta get my popcorn or get my drink or whatever, and well, popcorn sounds yeah, good. Or flip the laundry, you know. So <laughs> it's good to have an overture. Yeah. Um, also, Alfred Hitchcock's ha- had had his normal director cameo right in the beginning. Yeah, I love that. He, he, he missed the bus. The door closed. He missed the bus. Just poor, right before. Poor Alfred. Mm-hmm. I'll, <laughs> I, thought I read online that it said that some people think he has a second cameo dressed as a woman. I think I've heard that before. That's... Um, yeah, it's at like 45 minutes, um, 45 minutes, 50 seconds-ish. He's like a passenger but i i don't think it's him i really don't think it's him i think it's just a woman who kind of looks like alfred hitchcock but it's funny that the people think that i took a screenshot of it let me show you oh here it is oh wow that's all right all right i'm, I'm gonna save that i'll put that in the instagram post okay great that's what i was hoping <laughs> it's really silly like it really does look like him it but it kind of does like she kind of I does don't, i just don't think it's him. i see it but i don't see it enough to take it seriously like i don't think they had as good of like that good of wigs back then no and he's like completely crossing his legs or she is and like her wrists and her hands look dainty and stuff so yeah i don't yeah. think it is but it's really funny that people think that yes absolutely i love alfred hitchcock cameos so i love that that's a thing like and I, I love that that kind of inspired M. Night Shyamalan and yeah people. like I, I think they have some similarities, M. Night Shyamalan and Hitchcock. They were both my, well, maybe just to me because I both, I grew up on them and I really idolized them as a, as a youngster. That's awesome. I love that. They're both. I like they're the both, cameo thing. Yeah. Yeah. They're both very good filmmakers to idolize, I would say, because I've always really liked M. Night's movies. Most of the, almost all of them except for the one which we don't talk about but um yeah. but it, but like his early movies i i haven't seen wide awake but his big early three of six sense unbreakable and signs are just all so good mm-hmm. they're, they're all so good and they're so well made and directed and acted and i liked how he connected his cameos when he did his trilogy i thought that was really great oh of the unbreakable split mm-hmm. thing yeah mm-hmm. when he connected it from like 20 years almost that that was great yeah what was the most recent one called oh glass glass yeah glass yeah we watched those in a day that was fun wait so we yeah we went to go see glass in theaters and we watched the two at your house right yeah okay yeah yes that was fun i haven't seen any of those movies since then me either i i like split a lot though yeah me too that'd be fun to do for an episode yeah it's back to north by northwest some of the dialogue in this movie i thought was just hysterical me too I loved um, the night after he gets arrested. He goes back to the house, and then uh, the woman's there, and, and, and then she says like something like like Oh, did you borrow Laura's Mercedes?" And he's like, "I didn't borrow Laura's Mercedes." <laughs> and somebody was like, "It's okay, just just suck it up and pay the two dollars." And I'm like, yeah. "Wow, inflation is such a thing." Like, <laughs> two dollars, right? Two dollars. Like, he's just like, "All right, fine." He's like, like, "Fine." That's so funny. Yeah, because oh, it just it's so frustrating to watch him go through that scene. It's, it ugh. was, though. It's like, so, come yeah. on. Like, he, like, who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> I felt, like, so confused and agitated, but, like, in a good way. Um, yeah. Like, I, I really felt like the movie did a good job of putting you in his shoes. Yeah, for sure. His mom, though. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, she, let's talk about his mom. Yeah, yeah. So probably my favorite dialogue exchange in the movie was she says, I'll be late for bridge. And he says, good, then you'll lose less than usual. <laughs> and I'm like, perfect. Damn. <laughs> but no, his mom was not supportive at all. Like She was a weird character. She was only eight years older than him in real life. <laughs> yeah, I... I um. I felt like maybe I missed a line or something because they looked similar in age and he kept calling yeah. her dear. And then, and then I'm like, wait a minute, like, I thought you were his mom. I know uh-huh. this isn't like Sleepwalkers. Like, we're not in Stephen King land. We're in Alfred Hitchcock right. territory. So. But it was weird. Like, why why her? Like, does he still live with her? Does he live with her because he's been divorced twice and he's just kind of in between chicks? Or, or does he just visit her a lot? He's like a mama's boy. But she really doesn't support him. No. And I don't know. I, th- I think she would have, like, that character would have been better as, like, a friend. Or, like, his secretary. Why couldn't it have been his secretary the whole time? I think that would have been fun. She was a great character. Yeah, yeah. Now, I wrote this next quote down, but I don't have any, like, context for it. But, but so, so it's weird. But uh, <laughs> it says, it says, you want me to jump off of a moving plane? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that line, too. It's It's really, like, this movie is... It's it's very much like a like a James Bond precursor in a lot of Absolutely. ways, um, which I find really fascinating. That like obviously Doctor No was the first one with Sean Connery in sixty seven, I think. Um, no sixty two. I'm no sixty two. But um, so this was mm-hmm. like this this was this wasn't too far ahead of that. But really, it's like when you think about the seeds that were planted, you really could give Alfred Hitchcock credit for also starting James Bond, even though he didn't really, and James Bond was a book series first, and Alfred Hitchcock has a lot of (laughs) credit in the film world anyway. (laughs) But this movie, it's like so stylized in a Bond way that it it really like paved the way for it. Like mistaken identity and the way the action set pieces are, especially with the older Bond movies, like even like the Roger Moore ones, like from Sean Connery to Roger Moore, how how the action is staged and how the dialogue is and how like the scenes with you know the love interest or the Mm -hmm. you know like that kind of thing so yeah which then which then leads into kingsman so it's like three generations of oh god cinema (laughs) no which is basically james bond also so like except rated r so except stupid (laughs) (laughs) wait a minute too vulgar Wait a minute, did did we go see one of those together or no? I no, I didn't know. No, okay. Cuz I went and I, I don't know who I went and saw it with then. I saw one of them with somebody. I think I remember like the night some of our friends went and you went and I did not go. <laughs> I I didn't go to Blade Runner 2049 and I wish I had cuz it's like one of the most visually beautiful films ever made. Oh, it's but the so sh- good. but the showtime was at midnight and I and I had school the next day and I'm like I, can, I can't stay up till 3 a.m. and then go to school like I cannot go to a midnight showing no no I can't especially if the movie is like like deliberately slow paced like like you got to yes. be in the right mood for it no yeah my I, I mean I saw The Hobbit at midnight and I fell asleep <laughs> <laughs> I, I I watched it on a bus and almost fell asleep and, and then we it's switched so to the and, and then we switched to the Great Outdoors and I found and then I met Lucy Deakins and my life has changed. <laughs> But I've told that story yeah, before. Stupid Hobbit. But I was on a bus. I was. I was. And, and, and somebody was like, "Let's watch The Hobbit." And then, and then I, was, I was sitting there being like, "I am so bored." And then, and then, yeah. and, then and then, like thirty minutes into the movie, um, somebody was like, "Okay, no one's watching this." And they put the great outdoors on. And then Lucy Deacon oh, showed good. up. And then, and then I was, and then I was like, "Okay, I'm, I'm awake now." Yes. I, I woke back up. I'm, I'm fat. I'm fascinated where this movie's going to go. That was my thought process. Yeah. It's an adventure. I'm so gripped by the story, by the side story in this comedy. Like. <laughs> With Lucy. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I really love the shot when he's waiting for the bus and the other gentleman just like, he gets dropped off in his car. And I was really suspicious of that other guy. But then the shot yeah. of the two of them on the sides of the screen and then like the road in the middle with the bus coming was just so, uh-huh. it was so poetic. I loved that. Yeah, uh, that whole country scene was very cool. Mm-hmm. It felt so very tense. Different. I know. Yeah, it was very sus- suspenseful. It's kind of like watching like Twister or like a tornado movie. Yes. You see something in the distance and it's just like slowly coming towards you and you're like, oh my God, it's going to hit me. Sharknado. Sharknado. Mm-hmm. And he's going to like duck. Yeah. Wait, what is this movie rated? PG-13, I think. Is it really? Well, it must have been re-rated because that didn't exist for another 30 years. 
Oh, interesting. Um... So PG-13 came out in 1984 because it came out after Temple of Doom and Gremlins like scarred a bunch Maybe of kids. Maybe it's PG then. IMDb says it's approved. It it approved. It's... I, I thought I saw somewhere it was rated something. You know, you you could be, you, you might be right because movies get re-rated all the time. Like Clockwork Orange was rated X and now it's rated R. Or maybe NC-17, but like that's the oh, same okay. thing. Yeah. NC-17. Yeah, Taxi Driver was, might have been rated X also or Scarface or something. But like na- then they, they re-rate movies because, you know, the rating system changes. I would say, I mean, I would say it's PG. I would say so too. It's definitely there's no blood, there's no sex really. There's they no language really. There's a little bit, no. but like mild. So it's kind of like a tamer James Bond, also. But I guess the early ones were also like PG. So yeah, I was actually taken aback by like some of their sexual dialogue. I was like, oh my, yes, she's coming on strong. Yes, me too. I was not expecting that. I was in the exact same boat. Um, when, when certain dialogue lines, I didn't write any of them down, but yeah. I, I know what you're talking about for sure. Yeah. I know I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but I watched, um, I'll, t- I'll, I'll talk about it more later, but I was watching one of the James Bond movies and I had the exact same reaction where, where one of the female characters was talking to him and she was coming on to him so strongly. Gosh. It was just like the same kind of reaction. Like granted that was the eighties, but still like going from mm. that to this, I had a similar reaction. It's just very interesting. That, yeah. like, 30 years of cinema has that, um, going back 30 years has that, like, effect still. Because I was like, wow. Like, same mm-hmm. reaction. I don't even feel like today it's that apparent. I don't know. It's, it's interesting because women are different in society now. Because back then it's like, if a woman comes on to you, it's just like, oh my god, wow. Like, you have to take this opportunity because... <laughs> Like here, like 2021, we're just like, yeah, whatever. DTF? That's the most poetic thing I've ever heard. In the 50s, if a woman's coming on strong to you, you take the opportunity. 2020, yeah, whatever, DTF, question mark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I don't know, it's it's so much different. Like, man, to time mm. travel back to the 50s. Well, you know, you can do that, but, you know. I don't think I would want to. <laughs> well, Marty McFly did it, and it made his life better. So, well, spoilers for Back to the Future. If you haven't seen Back to, <laughs> if you haven't seen Back to the Future, turn off our podcast and go watch it. We're just two post college film students talking about, you know, some movie from the fifties. Like, 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 go watch Back to the Future if you haven't seen it. Yeah, go educate yourself. <laughs> Although, if if we if we had time machines, first of all, keeping the ethical piece of it aside and the paradoxes aside, we both fully well know where I would go. Sorry, when I would go. Yeah, when. <laughs> correct myself. When. Um, the part when the when the bus came by and the other guy got on the bus and then Cary Grant was, I don't know which name to call him, like to call him Kaplan or Thornhill, but like, whatever. So when Cary Grant is standing on the, like the one guy's like running towards the bus, I thought of the ending of Dumb and Dumber because it's the exact same <laughs> shot. It's the exact same <laughs> shot. They're flagging the bus down, running at it. And you know, the town is back that way. Oh my god, yeah, you're right. It's it's the same shot, and, and, and now I'm like, they were inspired by this, and I totally love that. The, 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 really ni- the 90s comedy references a Hitchcock movie. I love it. Yeah, the Mount Rushmore scene, whenever they show somebody like climbing a, like a huge rock or something really high up, and they don't have like any gear or anything, I just start like sweating. Like, like I, I know, it. I know, yes, palms are sweaty. Yes. The whole time. My mom even said that too. I watched this with my mom, mm-hmm. and uh... Yeah, she's like, my palms are sweating. She gets really weird about heights and stuff and watching people go over ledges and things. And yeah, yeah it was suspenseful yeah. at the end. Yeah, my, my mom's that way too because she, she doesn't like heights either. So like, I, I can only imagine what watching this would be like for her. I don't know what came first, this or Vertigo, but I was going to be like, I wonder if Alfred Hitchcock built off of that to, for Vertigo because that movie's all about... Actually, I think Vertigo came first. Let me double check. Yes, it did. It, it was one year before... Vertigo was one year before this. North by Northwest. And then Rear Window was before either of those, and Psycho was after. Psycho was after? Oh, Psycho yeah. Psycho was 19... in 1960. 60. Why was it in black and white? Because of the blood. Because he, because he had to get around the Ace Code. Oh, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, that that that's like a triple whammy right there. You know, you have Vertigo, North by Northwest, Northwest, and Psycho, like, three years in a row. Like, damn, damn. I wish I could do that. That's like his whole like legacy right there three years 
but he has so many movies. Yeah, I, I've only seen like five of his movies, I think. But um, yeah. which which would be a lot, but for him it isn't because he has a. And he also had the TV so show uh, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and um, I don't know how involved he was with that or how many episodes he directed, but I have that on DVD. Let me. S- do I have that with me? Let me look. I saw it. I I, did, I haven't seen it, but I saw the DVD in a library once, and I was like, wow, that looks really cool. Then I looked at the back, and I'm like, there's like 20 movies on here. I'm not going to be able to get these done in a week. I used to have it. I don't know where it went. It's not in my collection anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I stole it. You stole it. No, borrowed it. In the <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, five seasons. That's that's a lot. I think it, I only had the first season, maybe. Well, I'm not sure, but where did it go? Um, I wanted to talk about some other movies that have the same premise of like somebody kidnapping the wrong person or like somebody being confused as someone else like like baby's day out when they kidnap a baby is that the plot um, of that movie i think so i don't remember i saw I, I know i saw like some of it one time let's see baby's day out there it is yeah oh i've i've seen that like forever ago me too i was a baby i wasn't a baby i watched baby geniuses when i was a baby and i don't remember it at all but i know i watched it like I That's have a memory, horrible. I have a memory of renting it, but not watching no. the movie. So I probably repressed it because I've heard it's very bad. Oh God, no! I remember watching the trailer and I was like, "No, thank you." I must have been very young. When did it come out? I'm gonna look it up. Let's see. I bet like 2006 or something. Oh, 1999. What? It's from the director of A Christmas Story. What? And Black Christmas. And Wait, Baby okay. Geniuses too, because that also exists for some reason. Wait, the no. The same person who directed the Christmas Story directed Black Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> there's, Maddie. There's five Baby Geniuses movies. I'm you not can't kidding. See it right now, but my jaw is on the floor. The last one is called Baby Geniuses and the Space Baby. I misread it as the Splice Baby, and I and I was <laughs> I was like, Dune. <laughs> Space Baby. <laughs> that, that's what the sixth one should be called. The most confusing sequel ever. Wait, Space Baby, Spice Baby? Which which one's five? Which one's six? Uh, who cares? Oh, God, no. Stop. The Spice Baby. <laughs> that's my new favorite. <laughs> the Spice Baby. Um, all right, so, uh, yeah, North by Northwest. <laughs> Were you surprised that the girl Eve was a Yes, I was. Agent? Oh. It wasn't a huge, like, gasp, but my, my reaction was pretty much, oh, okay, that's fascinating. Oh. 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 Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, I probably gasped. I think I gasped. <laughs> I was probably like, oh. Mm-hmm. I liked her character a lot. I think she was she was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, she was awesome. I loved her banter with Cary Grant, and I, I, love, the, I love how, um... I was going to say I love how fearless she was, but what I'm talking about is I love how, even though when we first see her, we don't know that she knows what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then, like, multiple times the police come up to her and say, like, hey, have you seen this guy? And then she just straight out, like, straight up just, like, lies to them and just does it so yeah. well. That was, like, She's really awesome. She's such a good liar. Yeah. That was awesome. Yes. Very good. She was totally, not even subtly, was hinting about how much she liked Cary Grant. Oh, Yeah. What's his real name? Thorn something? Roger Thornhill. Thornhill. I, was, I, I kept wanting to say Thornberry, and I'm like, that's not it. Oh, yeah. So the, the other movies where people oh, are yeah, yeah, people sorry. kidnapped the wrong person. Um, Spice Baby. Big Lebowski. Yep. Date Night. Have you seen that? No, I've heard of it, though. It's good. I really like it. Uh, Which is my Galaxy answer Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest. <laughs> I haven't seen. Uh, maybe I'll watch it soon, though, because It's Trek. good. Three Amigos, hilarious. I have seen Three Amigos a long time ago. I need to rewatch it. Desperately Seeking Susan, which is on HBO, just added it to my list. Yep. And Red Rock West with Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage? And also, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also a ton of like Hallmark romantic comedy series, like things-ish, like the, the Lizzie McGuire movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. The Princess Switch and The Parent Trap. <laughs> what the hell is The Princess Switch? It's with Vanessa Hudgens on Netflix. Um, it's when oh, she okay. travels to a foreign country and she looks exactly like the princess there. And she gets like 
confused with her and she has to play the role of the princess. Hmm. <laughs> that sounds intriguing. Uh, but yeah. The Lucy McGuire movie did it best, though. Yes, it did. And then Parent Trap also. <laughs> but that that's kind of easy because it's... Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like what they're supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Lizzie McGuire movie does it does it best. I don't even remember that movie, but I know for sure I've seen it. I know I've oh, seen it. Oh, I know it. that movie very well. <laughs> that would be fun to do an episode on. <laughs> ah, do you want to add it? Let's do we it. We should do some decoms. But that's, that, that, that was a theatrical movie, but yes, we should do decoms. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting was here it being really? like... Yeah, I'm sitting here being like, um, actually, it was theatrically um, released. Um, actually... Um, actually, Star Wars is for children. I did not know it was in theaters. I thought it was just a decom. Uh, I'm pr- let me let me double check that before I. Yes, it is. It's the first theatrical film based on a Disney Channel series. Dang. They were going to do a new Lizzie McGuire on like Hulu or something, and then that ended up and got canceled, which really sucks because I I would have totally watched that. Aww. Because because Hilary Duff was like, oh, we, we're gonna we're gonna do it, but it's we're gonna make another. Like, we're going to make a revival, but we're going to make it, like, you know, a, for the adults who watched the original show as kids. And then that was, like, a controversial choice. And then it ended up and got canceled. Dang it. And they're talking about doing that for Drake and Josh, which they don't have to follow that show. But just get those two actors back in the same thing <gasps> and make it for adults. That's so great. Oh. oh, my God. Which is, like, I think that's what they're talking about doing anyway. Like, the two, like, Drake and Josh are just talking about making another show together. And I'm like, I don't care what it is. I'll watch it. I'd be down. Yes. Yes. I feel like they could do kind of like a 21 Jump Street thing. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. Drake and Josh, if you're if you're listening, it's a huge honor. But if you're also listening, if you're listening, <laughs> also, um, you've just gotten a great idea. So go and use it. <laughs> Sorry, so go it's, do it's, it. Thank it's, you. It's, it's your it's your idea. You 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 sh- you should be the one to give it out, not me. <laughs> oh god. Okay, so were you confused at the beginning when they they took him as um Kaplan and you're like what why does why did he get taken as Kaplan? He's just like a random guy. Yes. Okay, so I looked it up. I looked up the explanation. Here it is. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so Roger Thornhill is in the hotel, hotel lobby uh, restaurant area, and he's there for a meeting. He introduces himself as Roger Thornhill, but then he remembers he has to send a telegram to his mother or his secretary to tell his mother or blah, blah, blah. Right. uh, That he, like, he's not going to be able to reach his mother. So then the kidnappers are there. They're expecting Kaplan to be at this hotel at this time. And at the same time, Roger goes up to make the telegram. George Kaplan is being paged over the intercom. So then the kidnappers assume that this guy is Kaplan. He's getting up to go address the intercom paging. uh, And they take him. So that's definitely what I missed. I missed that completely. Me too. But then I'm like, well, why does he get paid? Why does a fake person, Kaplan, get paged over the hotel intercom? Maybe it's the CIA, but like, why would they go through that? Why would they do that? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was overthinking it, but the scene when they take him and, and they, like, the night they take him the first time and mm-hmm. they put him in the car and then, and then they're like, you know, we have, like, a loaded weapon. You have to come with us. You know, we don't want to cause mm-hmm. a disturbance. And then they take him to the house. Once he's at the house, they keep asking him questions as if he's Kaplan. And, and for about a minute or so, I, I was thinking, like, okay, are are they, like, the people that hired Kaplan to be an agent and they're just like testing him because you know they could be being watched or something but then once they mm-hmm. started feeding him the bourbon then 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 I was like okay well they're they're not like you know mm-hmm. they, they obviously have malicious intention it's not that I feel like dumb asking this but I feel like kind of ignorant I guess because um I was a little confused on that too what because they made him drink a whole bottle of bourbon but then they just like have him drive home and get pulled over like like I thought they were gonna like poison him with it or something I was really that that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me Oh, so I thought they were going to get him super drunk and then have him drive straight off that cliff that he was going to drive. But then he, like, caught himself. And he's like, oh, I'm falling off a cliff. I better go this way. But then he ends up getting caught by the police, which actually was, like, in his favor. Oh. 
I think they were planning on just running him off the cliff. But like, why would they? Why would? They, uh, well, I mean, I guess that's that's a good way to set up a murder. I guess yeah. is to have so, like a drunk driving accident. Well, see, that makes a lot of sense. But I think the part that confused me was that once he gets to the police station, it's like things get worse for him before they get better. So yeah. in my head, I was trying to connect the two, and I'm like, oh, that was their part of their plan that he would get arrested. And then, and then, and then I was like, I th- that that's why I had confusion. But now gotcha. it makes total sense. Okay. I do pay attention to movies. I just want to make that clear. Like, no, I know. I know you play. You pay complete attention to movies. But I, yeah, I, I it, do. this one was kind of confusing at times. Mm-hmm. Although I, I followed Doom, which has like a lot more like. That's, that's it, it a has a lot more terminology. Movie. Yeah, all the words and like the jargon is just like what. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> so someday I will be a well-versed expert when the new Denae Villeneuve movie comes out. You're, you're gonna you're gonna be like, actually not you, um, cause 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 I know things. Somebody you know can say to you, "Hey Maddie, what does this mean in Dune?" And then you can be like, "You know who you should talk to about Dune?" But then you're gonna be like, "Here, go talk to this guy on Discord." And then it's my literal <laughs> like on Discord. I'll just already have you dialed up on the phone. Yeah. Like, here. <laughs> well, 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 if you call me, I'm gonna if if I'm if I'm there, I'm gonna answer. Like, like I'm not gonna like, you know. Yeah, ignore you're it, my so. Dune emergency contact. Okay. Um, I or think David I, Lynch in general. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say Twin Peaks. Um, David Lynch. Yes. Yes. When I'm watching a new movie, I do my best to pay as close attention as I can, even though that doesn't obviously always happen. But that's that's why because of moments like that because I'm like I missed when they're gonna like him driving off the cliff and I missed. I think you said you missed it too when they called um, Kaplan on the intercom in the hotel. Oh yeah, yeah. For Lost Highway, the movie, this isn't the spoiler, the movie starts off like the very, very first line of the movie is so vital and important and I missed it the first time or I didn't fully register it because I'm still like setting da- sitting down and everything. So then when the mm-hmm. end of the movie came up and I rewound it to the beginning, I was like, Oh, that's what it means. So the ending didn't leave my, my mind blown, but the beginning, mm. when I went back, left my mind blown. So that was like an interesting experience. Mm, I see. There's like a line that's repeated. At the end of the movie, I'm like, okay, I understand, but like, is there a significance? And then I went back and watched the beginning and I'm like, oh shit! Oh it's, shit. They said it again! Which, yeah, I know. Um, so what did you think of the very last edit of the movie? When they're um when they're on Mount Rushmore and he's reaching for her and then it just cuts to them they're married they're in the train car, um and then the train goes through the tunnel. I thought it was sweet, but also weird. I don't know. It, it, they would have not have gotten away with that in this day and age, but for that time, I think it was I think it was cute. Um, <laughs> he's like Mrs. Thornhill. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's silly. It's, it's really silly. I, I think the whole Mount Rushmore thing is silly too. Like mm-hmm. he's like, oh, we're on top of the monument. I'm like, oh my God. Really? Oh my God. Really? <laughs> it's silly, but it's cool. It's like suspenseful too. But like what other movie has Mount Rushmore in it? Superman 2. I can't two. think of anything. Superman 2. Superman 2. Superman 2. For, for 30 seconds. Oh shit. Yeah. This was like a main plot point and it was kind of silly and... But I liked it. I don't know. I liked it. It was an abrupt way to end. I feel like we needed more of like a... Yes. Like, okay, you're going to help us in the CIA now, Mr. Thornhill type Mm -hmm. of thing. Which I think would have been beneficial instead of just like, oh, they get married even though he has two ex-wives and he lives with his mother or maybe or something. (laughs) And... It's like, yay, and he's like 20 years older than she is, and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was what do a, you think? Yeah, I think, artic- I think that articulates it very well. I think um, I, was ju- I was just surprised by how abrupt it was, and, and I, I, yeah. I, 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 was, I was sitting there trying to be like, okay, well, I get like what each scene means individually, but why was it edited this way? Because, like, mm-hmm. his dialogue of saying, like, Mrs. Thornhill and stuff is, like, it's overlaid the scene. Like, you see his face, but yeah. he's not saying it. And then, and then he, like, reaches for her hand and then just, like, cuts to them in the train. And then, and then, I, and then I'm like, other than saving time, is there a, is there a reason for this edit? Which also made yeah. me feel kind of stupid because I'm, like, I'm confused by this movie. <laughs> and even, like, the ending, <laughs> like, I don't get the editing choices. I don't it know. was a weird ending, for sure. I don't think it was very, yeah, it was abrupt. 
that's the best way to put it. There's not much resolution with it. It's just like a climax. And that's it. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, it was just like, whoa, okay, we're done. Okay. And then there's there was no credits for me on HBO. I, I don't know what the exact year was, but up until the mid-70s even, opening credits were entirely in the beginning, and then the movie just says the end. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's normal. I think 75 was the turning point because, like, Rocky Horror and Jaws kind of have end credits, although they also have... They, they have a mixture. Mm. Well, yeah, I, I didn't feel like there were complete credits at the beginning. It was just, like, a few of the main ones, right? But that, that, that that's how it would be. I think in the 60s is when it started to change because, like, movies like Sound of Music and Graduate just have, like, the cast at the end and then that's it. Really? It's crazy. It's kind of funny because when you watch a new movie, a current one, you, you, you can be like, okay, so this is how long it is, but the credits are five to ten minutes, so you can really, it's really <laughs> this long. And for, old, for older movies, it's like, no, it's really that long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this movie was over two hours long. I think it was like 2.15? Two two fi yeah, 2.15. Something like yeah. that? Yeah. 2.16, I think is the official. Yeah. Yeah, 2.16. IMDb says 2.16, so we'll go with that. I know you kind of felt the the runtime a little bit was a bit too long but for me i i was i was with it the whole time i kind of liked it i actually i really liked it i enjoyed the whole time uh, the whole storyline and everything i really i really wish that that i felt that way with that you did but yeah I, I i definitely felt the length quite a bit um but i really wish i didn't and i feel kind of bad that i did because like you know it's like a classic movie like you're supposed to like I don't know if that's a me thing or if that's like a we live in a society. It was like a it was like a societal thing. Do you ever get that feeling like like especially like when we were in school and stuff? Oh, it's a classic movie, so you're supposed to appreciate it as this great work of art. If you sit there and you're like, I didn't like it, then then you just kind of feel like a piece of shit. Yeah. No. Yeah. Especially because there are those people in school who are like they love all these classic movies and they're like, I love it because this this this. I'm like. Are you just bullshitting because this movie sucked? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all have our opinions and a lot of it for me is story and it's I don't think that's wrong because if you don't like a story, that's not that's not bad. It means you're not into it and that's like the main thing in a movie, really. If like okay, you can appreciate the lighting and the audio mixing, <laughs> blah blah. <laughs> the camera moves. <laughs> yeah, like there's a lot of great art in different ways that goes into all of these films but i mean i'm i'm pretty story driven and if i don't like the plot then it, it kind of takes me out of it this is why we have a podcast together because i am in the exact same boat and i'm so glad mm -hmm. you verbalized that i i'm also very story driven if not entirely story driven so yeah i completely agree with what you said yeah that's that's so accurate. Okay, so when he went to the United Nations building? Yeah. I was like, is this real? Is this really in New York? It it really is in New York and it's a real building. They filmed the outside and the inside, um, but they filmed it in secret because they weren't allowed to film there. And I was like, well, how did they monetize this movie if they weren't allowed to film there? They, like, filmed it from across the street and stuff. But Hitchcock was, like, a shady shady butt and filmed it from inside a truck across the street. I thought those scenes were weird, or those shots were weird, where yeah. it was just, like, um, first Cary Grant getting out of the car, and then next the uh, kidnapper guy getting out of the car, walking up the steps to the building. And then they have the same shot on the inside, where they're just, like, walking somewhere. But it's a really cool building. It's really cool. So I was like, did they just like, is this like a painting they just did? But no, I looked it up and it looks exactly like that. So yeah, I was like, how did they not get sued? Maybe because it was a different time. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like that's, but that, that's such a unique idea. Like to film it in a truck from the opposite side of the street. Like, <laughs> like all film students should think that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Should, like should take that as advice. Oh, Alfred Hitchcock yeah. did it. I can do it too. Yeah. Actually, I mean, no, maybe I, he was I, a piece of shit. But. Yeah, I, I retract that statement because he kind of was a piece of shit. But he made he made <laughs> damn good movies. Um, that's for sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't get it. I don't get how they got away with that. Well, also, I guess because like security cameras weren't a thing back then, so that probably was a big, you know, or in the yeah. same way. I mean, 
So it probably was a... I don't know. But they're being their own security cameras. They are taking right. video of this place. Like, are those people even extras or are they just random people? I'm sure they were just random people. They didn't get, like... Paid. Signed releases and... Thank God that's different now. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I like that they filmed, like, throughout the country, through New York, mm-hmm. Chicago, like, rural Chicago, and then in yeah. South Dakota. It's pretty sweet. I just love that they were on location. Mm-hmm. Like, they actually filmed in New York. They actually filmed in Chicago. Like, that's just... Or, I don't know if they did film in Chicago, but you know what I mean. Like, like they actually... Yeah. No, they did, I think. Yeah. There's obviously, you know pros and cons to to the different eras of filmmaking but having it all on location just there's there's something magical about that it's like it's like practical effects where when it's really in front of the camera you believe it yeah except for the mount rushmore scene they yeah to that in studio but <laughs> yep they but they filmed in the like the cafeteria lodge area and like the surrounding areas and everything but well it's, uh... it still made my palm sweat so it was effective oh yeah for sure <laughs> I think, like, in real life, though, a human would be the size of, like, the pupil on George Washington instead of, like, the yes. area between the eyebrow and the bottom of the eye. Like, I think that was a little... The dimensions were a little off. Yeah. The the monument is so huge. But, you know, that's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, the airplane scene. Let's talk about that. For this, it was interesting. The, the way they did it was... Uh, they filmed the scene of the airplane going over the fields. Then they played it on a screen behind Cary Grant in this, like, ditch place. And he, they filmed the already existing film and then Cary Grant running into a ditch and, like, covering himself over the ditch with the airplane in the background. So it was, like, film on film. Hmm. Interesting. That's yeah. really fascinating. Yeah. Hollywood tricks. Oh yeah. So Cary Grant in bet- like at the during the whole filming, he was like, I don't understand this movie. And which is <laughs> That's probably which... what every David Lynch actor feels. <laughs> True. Yes, and but then eventually when audiences saw it, he was like, Oh, okay, I guess it's good. <laughs> but it's like I've been there, like, you know, shooting on sets where I'm like some random PA or something. I'm like, I don't understand what the heck is going on. And then I see the final product. I'm like, oh, cool. (laughs) You know, but he's like the lead actor. (laughs) Yes. Well, I'm sure Kyle MacLachlan felt very similar with Twin Peaks The Return. So. Oh, I bet. I bet. I mean, how could you not? (laughs) Also, he plays like six characters. So. Yeah, true. (laughs) Yeah, so um, while filming Vertigo, Alfred Hitchcock described like the plot of the movie to uh, Jimmy Stewart. And then Jimmy Stewart was like, yeah, I want to be in it. Like like he assumed that he was going to cast him. Mm. But then Alfred Hitchcock always wanted Cary Grant to do it. And then he, he realized there was a misunderstanding. And he's like, well, instead of having it them having a fallout, what he, Alfred Hitchcock did was um, he delayed production on North by Northwest until James Stewart was already filming Anatomy of a Murder. And, mm-hmm. and then he started the movie with Cary Grant because then you know, Jimmy Stewart was filming the other movie and he couldn't take the role. So Sly dog. That, that, that's how he did it. And, 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 and instead of just going to Jimmy Stewart being like, hey, I'm sorry, I messed up. Gosh, <laughs> come on, dude. Uh, yeah. So uh, did you have anything else you wanted to say about this movie? The original title for the film was going to be In a Northwesterly Direction. <laughs> huh? That's hard to say. Then they were like, no, it's going to be North by Northwest because it runs off the tongue easier, which, yes, hell yes, it does. Then Hitchcock also wanted a scene where Cary Grant was inside Abraham Lincoln's nose in the monument. And then he, like, <laughs> gave his position away by his sneezing. <laughs> what? <laughs> or what? So. so then he also wanted to call it the man in Lincoln's nose. <laughs> Which would have been great. That, that would have been right? a better title. Yeah, for sure. I I, I vote for that. <laughs> yeah. The man in Lincoln's uh, nose. That's great. Yeah. So funny. I, I thought that I thought that Cary Grant and the villain, Van Damme, looked exactly the same. Yeah, I thought that too. 
<laughs> I was like, did they do this on purpose because they think that Thornhill slash Kaplan, Kaplan like could look like anyone, and they just took him because he looks like a General Joe? Because <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, they're both really attractive, but it's just like they look the same. They it was so weird. <laughs> so I thought that was ironic. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> you're going to like this. When Roger gets to the hotel the second day where he sees um, Eve there, he goes up to the concierge and the concierge has his back towards him. And when he goes up to talk to him, I like totally expected Tim Curry to turn around. <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd be like, hello. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's funny because for a split second, I thought the exact same thing. <laughs> for like the briefest possible moment I'm, I'm like please be tim curry and then it wasn't yes. and i was disappointed i mean it could totally could have been you know well if if if, if we can deep fake someone to look like peter cushing <gasps> we, we can do that with tim curry just re re-release north by northwest the special edition and it's tim curry <laughs> from home on two that's the only difference oh my god that'd be so iconic. that's the only <laughs> difference <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we, we, we don't need we don't need CGI puppets singing. We, we don't we don't need to replace an actor in one scene but not another scene. We don't need to put any rocks in there um, in front of any characters. No. We, we 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 just need to put Tim Curry in it for thirty seconds. That'd be great. You can take audio from his from Wild Thornberries of him saying Thorn and Hill, and he can say Mister Thorn. <laughs> You, you you don't you don't need to pay some sound alike or you, uh, he's still doing voice work now so you could get him to do it now but i mean like if you yeah. want if you want like like a distinctive era of tim curry then you could just do that mm-hmm. <laughs> all right you, oh you, you know what maddie you're an editor you should make that <laughs> north okay, Northwest special edition i'll do it <laughs> Tuna and I talked about doing quite a few movie edits. We were going to make an edit of both cuts of Superman 2 and make it into a, a movie. Uh, we were going to do the Amazing Spider-Man movies. We were going to we were gonna take out... We, we were going to re-edit when Marnie was there, just take out the one part, and then that's it. We're done. <laughs> Special edition. <laughs> um, and the, the, there's something else we were going to edit also. We, ha- we haven't done this yet, but we talked about doing it. Yeah, and, and also I wanted to do 2001, like put the Pink Floyd music in at the end in the actual movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... A better editing choice for a transition would have been there's a shot on Cary Grant's face and then it transitions into Mount Rushmore. I think they could have done that better where he could have like been transformed into <laughs> Washington, Lincoln. Like, like one of the faces. like Yeah, mm-hmm. one of the faces. It was just kind of like half-assed, I feel like. But... Um, yeah, they could have done better, but <laughs> that's just that's, me. That's funny. <laughs> also, okay, so what did you think about the scene where Cary Grant was talking to the CIA, F- FBI agent guy in the airport, um, on, kind of on the airfield where their dialogue gets drowned out by the sound of a, an airplane taking off? You remember that? No. Let me, uh, here, I'll look it up. Uh, so that's, it's, it's the scene when they're in the airport. It's like where Cary Grant meets the FBI agent, CIA agent, whatever, and he's the one who tells him that Eve is working for them. And yeah. Then, um, and then he's like, they're talking about their next plan, and then for some reason, half of their dialogue gets drowned out by an airplane. I just don't understand what that means. See, I remember the scene with Eve, like like when he sees her again, and then when they have like that like like shot reveal, but I don't remember... Um, it's at one thirty-seven thirty-two. All rightio. Did you know originally they were supposed to be in Alaska instead of South Dakota? No, but I like that better. Right? I Wouldn't like that Alaska be better. sweet? That would have been better. So cool. Uh-huh. Sorry, sorry, South Dakota. I mean, I mean, the end scene is like iconic, but it's also silly. It is. Dry, like fighting over the mount rushmore i don't know i just i just kind of giggled yeah yeah i definitely felt that a little bit too <laughs> yeah so then uh they have a conversation and the plane drowns out the drowns out their words i don't understand what it is i don't understand what they're talking about what it means it's gonna mean something yeah i don't know maybe i've been watching too much david lynch <laughs> 
Well, then there would be subtitles. <laughs> I mean, it it kind of just picks up where they left off. Yeah, it it's strange. Yeah. I just didn't know if you had any thoughts about that, but it's like, it's weird. No, I'm sorry. I don't have any thoughts. I don't have any thoughts about that. I just, um, I'm just thinking about how, how you, cause when you watch David Lynch, you think everything isn't, especially with him, you think everything's intentional. So when you go back and watch a movie, that's also by an auteur director like Hitchcock or Kubrick or something, <laughs> then, then you still have that mindset. Everything's intentional, but then some yeah. things could just be bad audio, you know, you never know. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. I'm grounded now. Thank you. <laughs> I'm down. I'm back down to earth. I was up in space somewhere up in the sky. I was I'm up in earth. I was up in the sky. Now I'm grounded. And now and then there's um there's also a thing called below ground. Uh, I want to go back up in the sky. Lucy in the <laughs> sky with diamonds. It's a better place to be. Yes. But I mean, sometimes, you know, you just need to come back down realize who you are where where you're at and it's just kind of you know like level yourself for a minute and that's good just sit and relax get get (laughs) drink a get a beer i don't want a beer who said it was for you one more thing i had was other hitchcock movies like if you've seen this you kind of like it you should definitely watch all of other all of the other Hitchcock hits. Yeah. Rear Window, Rebecca, North by... Or North by... Yeah, North by... Vertigo, North. Psycho, The Birds. Vertigo, Psycho. Yes, The Birds. I don't I don't understand why The Birds wasn't on his top hits. It, like, when I, whenever I looked it up, it wasn't, but... Oh, I thought... It, I always thought it was, because there, there's that DVD set that has, like, those five on it. Okay, that makes sense because that was my introduction to Hitchcock. I loved it. <laughs> I um, my mine was Psycho, which I watched with my sister and my dad. Great, great family movie to watch yes, together. Yes, family flick. It was yes. great. Also, it's not offered Hitchcock, but Psycho Two is vastly underrated. So go watch it. I think I'll watch that. Yeah, <laughs> I actually really want to watch it again. Psycho Three, you can take it or leave it. Psycho Four is a pretty good conclusion, but the first, the, the first one obviously is like on a pedestal that you can't replicate. But then Psycho Two is like it's a solid movie, and then you know. Okay. But I do recommend watching all of them because they all have their like, it's like Friday the Thirteenth where they all have their moments, except they're all better than the worst Friday the Thirteenth movie is like way worse than Psycho Three. Dang. Okay. So 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 like Psycho Three is not like Jason Goes to Hell or Jason X, but it's like, it, it's like one of the middle of friday the 13th movies um in qual- in have quality. you seen disturbia ah uh, no is, is that's the one with shia labeouf right yeah shia labeouf it's kind of uh the remake ish of rear window have you what do you think of it i love that movie so much do you like From it more fir- than rear window uh yeah, i mean yeah that's but it was great man. to see Rear Window, to like see the inspiration behind it and everything. But yeah. I really love Disturbia. Like that was one of my favorite movies. Um, and then Rebecca. I have not Remember seen when Rebecca. I talked about but I've heard of it. like a few a uh, few months ago about I watched the Rebecca remake with Lily James yeah. and Tommy Hammer. I remember yeah. you talking about that. Yeah, so they have that now. If you want to watch that, it's it does not really give justice to the old one the old one is a lot better yeah and also you know if you've seen psycho or if you watch the bates motel that's all related i don't know how you can watch the bates motel if you have not seen psycho but yeah i haven't seen bates motel but i've i've heard i'm really interested in seeing it i think i watched the first episode first couple episodes mm-hmm. or something but wasn't for me you know yeah it's like it's, it's comparable to hannibal like how they both have shows that are kind of prequels but they also overlap with the movies i just find that really fascinating yeah there's a ton of hitchcock remakes or inspired buys that you can check out if you don't want to watch like an older movie but that might inspire you to watch an older movie so go for it if you're really into older movies, I really recommend Notorious, which is a very underrated Hitchcock movie. It mm. might be my favorite of his. 
Um, I think Cary Grant is in that. Yeah, so it's Cary Grant and Ingrid, Ingrid Bergman, and they're the oh. main pairing, and they are very, oh very God. good together. It's, it's yes, it's what you think. So, so somebody recommended Notorious to me, and then I, I said, okay, so what's the story? Their response was, it's just two beautiful people kissing for an hour and a half. And then I watched the movie, and then I'm like, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. There's, there, there, there's, there's some, like, whodunit plot with twists and turns, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's a very suspenseful movie. It might be, I think it's my favorite Hitchcock film. Okay, cool. I so if so if, if that didn't sell you, I don't know what I mean, will. yeah. <laughs> I'll watch it. I'm down. Yeah, this was a good one this week. Yeah, I, I'm glad I finally saw it. And I, I feel like if I watch it on a different day, I might get a totally different reaction out of it. So yeah. That'd yeah. be great. I, I would love that. I'm bummed I didn't love this. Every other Hitchcock movie, I've walked away from it and being like, man, that was really, really good. So it must have just been the day. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, uh, what did you watch this week? Oh, boy. Um, I... <laughs> I am so ready from, from your... Oh, boy. <laughs> and from what I know you watched, I'm so ready. I know. I know you... You've seen my letterbox. I watched a few. I watched The Blues Brothers from 1980. That was great. It was awesome. I've watched it before, I think, a long, long time ago, mm-hmm. but I don't remember anything. But it was it was really, really funny when I watched <laughs> it this time. It was great. The car chase scenes, oh my god. Yes. So great. So funny. I, I usually hate car chase scenes, mm-hmm. but... In this movie, it was amazing. <laughs> are, are, are you not a Fast and Furious fan then? Because that's kind of no. that whole series. No. No, I don't <laughs> like it. No. That's not my thing. <laughs> totally understandable. Um, but I'm glad you love Blues Brothers. Yeah. It's a very, it's a movie that's actually really special to me because um, it was one of the first movies I saw that was rated R. So I felt like much older because I saw it when I was like really young. Um, mm. And I watched it with my dad a lot. So like it's, it's a very, it's also just like so funny. It is. It's really funny. Also, Carrie Fisher is in it, and every movie she's in is good. Like, even if the movie's bad, like... Her character is insane She's great. In this movie. I love it. Well, <laughs> ca- well, it was during that time in real life that she was going through a lot of... I don't know if she was in rehab yet, but she had a lot of drug problems around that time. Mm. So, I don't, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but just, like, I was going to make a connection and I spaced out. <laughs> yeah, I love Carrie Fisher in that movie. She's so hysterical, and she's just like awesome like like i I wish that she in that role was in another movie because i just want i just like like that character i don't even know if she has a name but the character in in the movie is just it's just i I want a whole movie about her i I wish we had gotten that me too that would have been sweet (laughs) yeah her character is crazy (laughs) it's 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 amazing also also john candy's in that movie yeah when you have those there's a ton of people I wish I wish Carrie Fisher and John Candy had a scene together in some movie. Not this one, but like one that's like a little more grounded. I, actually, no, I take it back. The more <laughs> insane, the better with both of them because <laughs> John Candy can be John Candy and Carrie Fisher can be insane Carrie Fisher trying to kill uh, Jake, John Belushi, <laughs> because he screwed her over. Yeah. My favorite part that's of her. that scene is, El- is Elwood's reaction. Because she's listing all these, like, things that was going to happen at their wedding. All the people that, like, her family was going to be there. And then, and then Ella just said, hmm, okay. Just something about, like, his, his reaction is just great. Also, the part with the car at the very, very end. I don't want to spoil it. But the part at the very end, what happens to the car. And then just, like, their reaction is also just, like, really good. <laughs> and then there's so many people. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. And Steven Spielberg's in it. He's um when 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 they write the check out he he's the guy that they write the check to in the office. Really? Yeah. That's oh Steven my Spielberg. god! Ah, I love that. <laughs> and that would be great to do an episode on. I know I've said that like five times today, but I'm thinking of so many more things <laughs> I would want to talk about with that movie, like all the different like performers and all, all the different performances and all the different like musical yeah, numbers and such yeah. a good movie. I think everyone should see that movie. Yeah. I also watched Ready Player One Ooh, for the really? first time. Oh man, do I wish I would have seen that in theaters? Gosh dang! Yes. Oh, it was so cool looking. It was like all the effects and everything were awesome. All the CG. I know you're not a huge CG guy, but 
I really enjoyed it. I love that you said that because that's absolutely true. Not to rub this in your face. I had the absolute pleasure of seeing this in the theater and it was incredible. Oh, I bet. I haven't watched the full movie since the theater. I've seen like bits of it and stuff. Um, I've been meaning to rewatch it, but I really loved it the first time I saw it. For me, it's kind of like the precursor before Sword Art Online because it's a romance and it's VR. And Mm -hmm. in a way, this was like my gateway to that. So I love it even more for that. Even just as the movie itself, I really love it. And I love all the... Like, I know it's nostalgia bait, but I love all the pop culture references. Like, like, the, like there's Akira, the bike from mm-hmm. Akira, and then there's the DeLorean, and then there's, you know, the Iron Giant, and... Yeah. I thought I was going to miss out on, on a lot of that, but I really caught on to it. Because that's what I heard. It was like, oh, there's so many references to all these yes. modern things, but... I totally got it. I, I was surprised. The, um, apparently there's a Sword Art Online reference, but since I haven't gone back to watch it, I don't know if it's confirmed or not. Um, but, I, but I've heard there's like a reference and I'm like, if there is. But like the whole like story is like just like the mad genius and the whole VR world and all the different places you can go. And yeah. Also the part with Chucky is, is amazing. Peak cinema. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Well, it's kind of meta because... My boyfriend, he brought home this thing called the HoloLens, and he's using it within his company to do AR, augmented yes. reality, and it's a pair of glasses you put on your head, and you can see what's in front of you, but also you can, like, touch things and mm-hmm. measure distances, like, real-time dif- distances between points yes. that you have, and you can also... Well, we played a couple games on it. <laughs> it was fun. But um it just it takes your real time space, yeah. you know, and Wow. Yeah, and and he's going to use it for his job like so when his mechanics don't know what's wrong um and he gets called mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, they can they can put on this headset and they'll be like, "So, here's what I'm looking at. Here's what this is, here's what this is, and then he can see that." through his computer or whatever and help them with it so it's like crazy like helpful but it just all kind of plays into this whole augmented virtual reality which i watched in ready player one and spy kids 3d which before we move on to spy kids i just want to make a brief little anecdote the sword art online movie the first one is about augmented reality so not to express my anime side too much but um, it's it's a it's a really good movie. Obviously, I, I think so. When you said I'm into reality, I'm like that's also something I can make reference to. Also, Spy Kids 3D. <laughs> what other movie besides Shark Boy and Lava Girl do you need in 3D? Like those two, and maybe Avatar, maybe like Clash of the Titans. What? Like no. Like it's Spy Kids 3D and Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And <laughs> dude, I saw Monsters versus Aliens. Three times. I forgot in 3D. about that movie. Why? I watched that, not in 3D, but I watched that. I hate that movie so much. I never wanted to see it. I ended up seeing it in theaters Why? three times. That is the most I've ever seen a movie in theaters. I I guess I just ended up going with friends who wanted to see it, but I was like so pissed <laughs> every time. I I just I imagine hated that younger movie. you I hate in that the movie. theater, arms crossed, just like. Hmm, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, pretty much with my 3D glasses on. And, and now I'm sound like a total <laughs> weed, but you're, you're, you're just being all Sundere like, mm, I don't really like this movie, except that I do, but I don't. God, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the most I've ever seen a movie in theaters, and it was something I've never <laughs> wanted to see. I don't know if I've ever seen a movie in theaters three times. I know I've seen movies twice, but I don't know if I've ever seen a movie three times. So now that that's a new goal I have. Well, at least you rage watched it. I've seen it once. I don't remember a damn thing about it. I don't either. <laughs> wow, you you really blocked that out. Yeah, so Spy Kids yeah. 3D. It's end game for Spy Kids. It really is. The end, they call in all of yes. the family and they call in all of the people from the previous movies. <laughs> it's ah, great. It's, so great. it's a really bad movie, but it's entertaining. <laughs> I saw that in theaters also. I think I probably 2003. I remember because yeah, in the theater they had the strap on the back of the glasses and th- then when it came on DVD they didn't oh. do that but whatever theater I went to they like punched a hole in the back of the glasses and they put a strap so you could like they wouldn't fall off oh so have you watched the first two Spy Kids movies recently 
Not recently, <laughs> no. They didn't have them at Goodwill where I got mm. Spy Kids 3D with all four pairs of. Yeah, mine had that too. I was so happy <laughs> because it, it it was sealed. It was like three dollars. It like, looked brand new. It had that like yeah, mine was one fifty. It had that dope slip cover too. One like, fifty. Yes, the slip awesome. cover and everything. And I also got Black Swan on Blu-ray oh, yeah. for one. Wait for one. That's incredible. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to put on my uh, my pretentious film glasses here, and I'm going to say I have never seen Black Swan, but I have seen Perfect Blue, which apparently Black Swan quote homages certain things from that movie. Oh, okay. Perfect Blue is very disturbing, but it's very good. I've heard Black Swan is very good. I have that little like pretentious head turned to it because I've seen Perfect Blue, and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> that's fair. Hmm. But no, I'm sure Black Swan's very good. <laughs> In all seriousness, I, I'm, I'm sure it's great. I'm so glad you got it for $1.50. fifty. I've never seen it. I've been wanting to see it for a very long time. Let so me know I just what you think. It. <laughs> I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Okay, um, I will. Because because I I take your film recommendations very seriously. So um so if you don't like it, I'm not gonna well, probably watch it. Um, well, that's not true. Um, I'll be much less inclined to watch it though. I will say. Yeah. Fair. Fair. Um, I will finish my last movie I watched. I watched Pitch Black from the year 2000. It's the first in the Riddick series. Like the, it came like Pitch Black, Chronicles of Riddick, and then a third one. I had seen Chronicles of Riddick, but I hadn't seen Pitch Black. And it was good. It was suspenseful, kind of horrific, and had these like scary little bat creatures. I'm not a huge Vin Diesel fan, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It was weird. They had they were on a planet with three suns, and like this, the lighting effects were kind of crazy. I didn't really like it, but the story was good. So the third one is called Riddick. So apparently franchises with Vin Diesel just, just have Riddick. the best and most consistent movie titles ever. <laughs> Pitch Black, The Chronicles of Riddick, and Riddick. Like... You you don't you don't get better named than that. That's not confusing at all. That's that matches perfectly. Yeah, but that is all I watched. That's great. So I watched for your eyes only, which is a Roger Moore James Bond movie. It was recorded on the TV, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll watch this. I wasn't huge into it, but it it was still like fun to watch at the same time. It's one of the more serious James Bond movies, but it wasn't. It, 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 it wasn't my favorite for sure, but it, there there were fun moments in it. The editing was like weird, but also it had that 80s style, but it was edited kind of choppy at the same time. It's kind of hard to explain unless you like, it, it's not like you see Liam Neeson take 19 takes, jump over a fence. It's like you have 19 cuts. I mean, you you have like, um the editing isn't like that, but it's like the opposite effect where everything's really quick and you're trying to be like, like what's happening? I also watched a movie called Into the Gloaming, which is the t- part of the, the song title, I think. And it was directed by Christopher Reeve, and it was an HBO movie from, like, the 80s, I think. 80, late 80s, late 90s. It was about this man that comes home to his family, and he's dying of AIDS, and it's just, like, the last week, the last couple months he spends with them. It, it was sad for sure. It definitely gave me the feels. But my my issue with it was it was only, like, it was it was about an hour, I think, and I wanted more of it. So I feel very similar with that as I do with Garden of Words, the anime film, um, where it's like, I really like it, but I wish it was longer so I could feel even more like connected to it. Um, and my voice is starting to give out and my phone is almost dying, so I have nothing more to say. Yeah, so what is our prescription for next week? Our prescription is E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Sounds good. I'm actually really I'm so excited. excited. So yeah, I just discovered um, Peacock. Mrs. Peacock. And it's free on there. Go join Peacock because it's free. What the heck? It's amazing. Non-spawn, but like, because we don't have Not any yet, spawns. Anyway, but... never say never. <laughs> it, yeah, so I'm going to watch it on there. You have the... You have the disc. For which one? Oh, for E.T.? Yes, I do have the disc. Sorry, I, sorry, I, I, I was trying to find a reference okay. to Clue. Yes, I have E.T. on disc. I will watch it. <laughs> Mrs. Peacock was a man? Yeah, so... Oh my gosh, Mrs. Peacock. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited. I love this movie so much. We yes. both love it. It's I haven't seen a good it in so episode. long. I'm so excited to watch so. this. Oh, it's so good. The music is amazing. John Williams is a god. I, I do not <laughs> believe he's human. I'm not even joking. 
I yeah, I don't think he is. Although Jerry Goldsmith was also amazing, but he's no longer with the living, so he's he he's ascended. So, Aww. and also James Horner, which they did the Scorsese yeah. Star Trek one and two, but among many other movies, obviously. And Avatar. Yeah, James Horner. I think. Uh, Aliens, also, I'm sure. Uh, he does all of James Cameron's, so Titanic. Okay. Okay. He was gonna do the score for the Avatar sequels, but that you know that didn't happen because they're not out yet. Well, I mean they're yes, gonna yes, happen. they're making four sequels consecutively, so it's taking them like twelve something years. Oh yeah, because they're they're filming them all at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. What the, the heck? Avatar two is supposed to come out like in like twenty fourteen or twenty sixteen, and then it keeps getting delayed because well probably because of COVID because they're filming all of them at once. That's yeah, so crazy. filming concluded yeah. in late September twenty twenty after over three years of shooting. The current release date is December 16th, 2022. So. Wow. Um, wow. Frank Jr. is is going to be in it. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> Scar- Scarlet's husband in Boston Translation. Also, yeah. uh, Kate Winslet, which is awesome. Ooh. Also, uh, the guy who voices the Moon Man in Rick and Morty. Uh, also, uh, Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> so everything she's in is great. Vin Diesel oh, yeah. also. For sure. For sure. Apparently. Vin Diesel. Yep. Really? Okay. Right. So go home and watch E.T. It's a classic. Classic. You gotta see it. Yes. Or at least listen to the soundtrack, because it's amazing. And um, we'll see you next week with some E.T. facts and fun. Spielberg, Close Encounters, Ready Player One. Yeah, so Close Encounters is often compared to E.T. They're both comparable movies. So we, we, we might talk about that. I love that movie, too. Thanks for listening to this week about North by Northwest. Educating yourself on some old-ass cinema. Go out and watch some, some good Hitchcock films, too. And Psycho, too. Psycho, too.